Brandon versus Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> okay, that's stuck. Uh, that sucked. This review will be done in the Joy-Con grip, by the way. If you're wondering, which maybe you shouldn't be, because that's kind of weird. Thanks. Sorry, just let me put these in. Did you like that new intro, by the way? Put in the comments if you like that new intro. So, Super Mario Odyssey. Ooh, since this game was revealed, I've been wanting to try it out so bad. I mean, I've always wanted to try the Switch, but, of course, I never had a chance because they didn't have, they didn't have them in stores for the demo. So, I was just like, well, I guess I can't. So, but, then when Mario Odyssey came out, Switches finally came into stores, and I think they just needed um, Mario Odyssey to actually, like, be part of the game. I mean, like, part of the system for it to actually work. So, yeah, so my first time playing this game was at uh, Target in Maryland, and I saw the Switch it was finally up. And I was like, oh, oh my god, I can actually play it. So I played it, and it was awesome. It was like the, it showed me in, showed, showed Mario in Toast Arena, um, going through the levels, I mean, going through the first uh, level area of that place, um, which was kind of like freezing ruin area. And it was awesome. I played it in this, by the way, when I was playing the game. Um, so it was nice to play. I'll go, go show you that area in the background while I'm talking. So, so I got, I got it. Uh, well, the Switch itself appeared at my house as a surprise on the day of Mario Odyssey's release. Present from my dad to my dad and I. So we could actually you know, experience Mario Odyssey, and it was, and it's a great experience. It was, uh, great coming home from school on Riley's, uh, 11th birthday, go, I mean, not his 11th birthday, the day after, and going to his, gonna go to his birthday party, and then just, like, putting my ice away from my lunchbox, and then seeing the Switch box, and then just being, like, looking at my dad, and then, and then looking at the box, and just, like, one of those cartoon moments where it's like, wait, this can't be happening. Because every time I had gotten a Switch in a dream, I woke up and I would just be like, yeah, that was a dream. And that's just what it was like. So, I did, it just didn't make me feel too good. Because I, I know I really wanted it, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't get it because there was just any... Well, I mean, I wanted Splatoon 2. I want Splatoon 2. That's the it. That's it. Only... So, yeah. <coughs> and, um... We got... So... So let's, let's talk story. Story! Alright, so story in this game. So Bowser and Mario, at the beginning of the game, are seeing... In the skies over Peach's castle, fighting for Peach, which was who was playing behind, and Mario gets the crap kicked out of him the whole way through, and and, and it's just like, and so Bowser has a hat, and he threw it at Mario, knocked his cap off, and then when it and then it came back, and um, well Mario's cap came back and. Landed on at Bowser's feet, and Mario got knocked off of Bowser's airship, and Bowser just uh, like shredded Mario's cap with his uh, <coughs> with his foot, and then when uh, and then 
so, so then this guy named Cappy finds Mario's hat and finds Mario and they become companions. And you see right up here on the screen, the cap has eyes now. <laughs> yeah, that is the name of a book I'm... I didn't know it's not a book. It was a chapter in my video game history talking about Mario Odyssey. And it was titled, The Cap Has Eyes, Why the Heck Is This Possible? Because by then we didn't even know that Cappy, uh, like, existed. Like, Cappy, we just knew that the Cap has eyes, oh my god. But, yeah, so then they go to stop Bowser have it, trying to have a wedding with Peach and stealing all of the greatest items from around the kingdoms in the game. Yes, there are multiple kingdoms. You're not just confined to the Mushroom Kingdom this time. You're confined to, like, the entire world and even the freaking moon. So, then, you know, you go on the globetrotting adventure and it is a, an experience like no other. Like, seriously, you can't have an experience as good as Mario Odyssey. If you're, like, if you just get home from work on a, on a bad day and want a good time, Mario Odyssey is your game. You can, you can just go and mess around and do, and do crap in it, like, fail at that. <laughs> um... And it's a, it's a very good experience because there are things like uh, like this, which is end game content, by the way. <laughs> Sorry for just letting you know now, but yeah, this is end game content, and you get this uh, after beating the game. So so um. Yeah, just get, so just, um, yeah, sorry. So, that yeah, that's basically the story. Each little, each kingdom has its own little story, and, uh, and it, like, gives you a, um, a little thing to fight for, because while Bowser's messed everything up, uh, for you by, uh, destroying your original cap, um, you kind of... Oh crap, I never thought about that. Wait. <gasps> Guys, I just realized what ha does Mario just like not have a cap now? Is Cappy going to be in all the rest of the Mario games? Is he like a an official like full-on character or something? I mean, yeah, like I don't I don't know. But anyways, so yeah, you get you like for I don't think anything, nothing was really messed up in the Cascade Kingdom, but, so, like, let's, let's take the Cap Kingdom, for example. Bowser went through and destroyed ev all their airships, and just left everything in a mess, captured Tiara, and Cappy went to try to save Tiara, but then ended up just finding Mario's little Cap and seeing Mario get the beat and the crap out of him. So, yeah. That's it for story. So let's move on to gameplay. Dun 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 dun. Wow. Oh crap. So gameplay in this game. This is like the perfect little area. Actually, let me get to the perfect area. So, so gameplay in this game is really simple. You use the left joystick on the left Joy-Con to move Mario around. Um, you can move him in all infinite directions because you like to specifically say like every infinite direction gets like smaller and smaller and then you can do stuff like that and uh yeah and you and it's back to the original um Mario 64 uh um arsenal of moves so you got you got your jump you got your double jump and you got your triple jump um you got your long jump. Oh my gosh, the long jump. 
And then just a regular new move that Mario has as well without without the help of Cappy is this roll, which it's momentum based, but you can also spam Y for it to just kind of move on its own, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to be like you don't have to be like Sonic to get it to work. And the best part is you go from a long jump into the roll into the long jump again. Infinite long jumps and infinite rolling from that. It's it's a, that that's a good thing. So let's get up into here and we're gonna talk about Cappy moves. All right. So you just for Cappy you press well for jumping by the way you press if you can see A and B. Yeah. In this game, for some reason, two buttons, like all two buttons, do the same thing. So A and B for jumping. Then for Cappy throw, which basically the general Cappy throw looks like this. So then there's a cap throw and hold, which you just press Y or X and hold it like this. And do you see do you see up there how the how Cappy just did that? Now there's now there's a cap jump where you have to do a cap hold. On the, sorry, I so long. So you do a cap hold, then you run up and you'll just jump up, and then see, and then you can do it again, which I like to call the double the double cap jump. And by the way, this thing is stupid. So, and then you've also got your ground pound, and I don't know if this move was in another game. It's the ground pound jump. Which is very, very nice if you have something that's just above length and you don't have enough room to do the triple jump. Like, let me... Oh my god. Okay, so apparently... Oh wait, I guess you can do it. Okay, so, yeah. Then there are some motion-only options, which means we're gonna go... Separate! Da, 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 da. Like this, or how they prefer you uh, doing it the uh, other way. So you gotta use the separate Joy Cons. And then to do this cap spin, you make the Joy Cons go like that. See that? So watch this. Yeah, like that. Or. If you want to do it without, you just move Mario around in a circle and starts till it starts spinning, then press Y or X. Like that. Alright, then he has his ground pound as well. And I th there's there's other motion control moves which are just kind of like they don't really get explained. Like there's this vertical, like there's just the regular one which you can just like do some cool things with. And then there's this uh, um, let me get in front of the switch, actually. There's this straight up one. It's a straight away, like, vertical. And then there's the homing cap throw, which we actually need to find something to possess. Uh, which I can't find at the moment. So we're just gonna... So we're just gonna, uh, do this. And, uh, over here, so, so, yeah, so you just, all you, what you have to do is you just have to shake the Joy-Con and then shake the Joy-Con again. Dang it. So, yeah, that's, that's all the controls in Super Mario Odyssey. So, now, we're going to get into my overall thoughts about the game. So, my overall thoughts on the game is that it's an amazing adventure. It really is. And I'm not just saying that because I love Nintendo, which I do, but he, but, but this game, this game is just like, like, if you had brought me Zelda and been like, yeah, this is the great game, I would have been like, <sighs> because, I mean, I like, I like Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is a good game. I like it. I even like the new survival aspects, which I used to not. I don't I don't have it on the Switch because I have it on the Wii U because I just got this thing. 
And so I have, and I like, and this is, and this is like, this is like what, what should have happened, um, on the Wii U, except it's now it's happening in the first year. Like, like this, it would have been awesome if this had happened in the, um, in the first year of the Wii U, but no, it never did actually happen. Um, and it was great. Oh, and one more control thing I forgot. There's also this, uh, move for the vertical, um, for the, um, vertical cap, um, throw. You do a ground pound and then press Y. You just gotta wait until, yeah, like that. See that? Oh. Yeah, so you see that? That's that's what you gotta do. So um, yeah, that's it. That's it for uh controls and my thoughts. It really like I love all the different levels in the game. They're all unique, and even the areas after the game with the um dark with the um spoilers for this, by the way. Uh, skip a little bit if you don't want spoilers. Um, the dark side and the darker side of the moon, which are coming, which, uh, come af after you beat the game, are still awesome, because, because, like, the dark side of the moon is awesome because it has good, um, good feeling from the beginning all the way through. Um, even though it's moon gravity and you're fighting all bosses you fought again, except for, you know, like, bosses that aren't the Brutals, you're fighting all the Brutal bosses, so, um, Brood Bot 5000, um, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of those things, uh, like Robo Brood, that's the actual name for the Ro Bro Brood Bot thing I just said, so, yeah, it's like, and then the darker side of the moon is like Champions Road or Grandmaster Galaxy. It's just like a nice little challenge. You need, like, an insane amount of, uh, moons, though. Just, like, ridiculous amount. So just, maybe you don't want to waste your time on the darker side of the moon. Like, I kind of are trying to do. I don't know how many moons I have more to go, but the, it, it's, um, it's gonna be a great experience, I'm sure. Lots of raging. Lots of rage quitting. And like I said, this is the only Nintendo game I have on the system. It's, you, you know, I have, I, I, like, really, when you get the Switch, you need to buy a Nintendo game and then get other of these, uh, Oh, I see. And then you need to get these other games as well. Because, you know, just Mario alone isn't going to last you, like, a few months. Um, unless you're going for, like, everything. Oh, god dang it. Otherwise it can last you a very, very long time. And... Like, you know, the death penalty is awesome because it doesn't even, like, make you lose a lot of, um, it doesn't, like, make you lose lives or anything. It just makes you lose a measly ten coins. So it's just, it's just great. I would recommend this over, like, any game on the system, including Splatoon 2. I mean, if you didn't get Zelda on the Wii U and you like the game enough that you're going to play it, I would recommend it to you as well as Mario. But Mario is way more accessible than, um... Mario Odyssey is way more accessible than, um... Than, uh... Oh, what's it called? Uh, Breath of the Wild. So... Yeah, that is my review of Super Mario Odyssey. May you enjoy it for a long time. 
I mean, may you enjoy the game, not the review, because I'm pretty sure you don't, you only, like, say a review once. But yeah, so that's my review. I give this game a solid 9.5 out of 10. There are, during this, during the um, end game content, there are way too many um, problems for the game to actually be a lot of fun. But what you can do is just buy infinite moons from Crazy Cap and then you'll be good. But yeah, this is my review of Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. And this is Brandon from Big McLarge Gaming signing out. Goodbye!